Welcome to 3PNR. I'm your host, Adam R. With me again tonight is Dan Spell and Mike Penicello of MUFON. Gentlemen, how are you doing tonight? Doing well. How are you, Adam? Doing well, doing well. I'm well, Adam. Thanks. How are you? Good. So we're going to start off with this tonight. Uh, It's a brief start off. There's this thing going on. I've been getting a lot of feedback on it. Uh, People still don't believe in UFOs. And this, this being even after the release of our military film, uh, with sophisticated equipment, nonetheless, it still bugs. It's undeniable at that point when you have pilots and it, it troubles me that people are calling people like David Fravor in a question. These are trained military observers. Uh, these are, they're fighter pilots, right? They're out there in the most expensive equipment. And it's not just him. Fighter pilots for hit throughout history have reported this phenomenon. Just now we have, again, a sophisticated device that has picked it up on, on imaging along with their testimony. And I can't wrap my head around why people are still denying the, the, the existence of these, these things. I, I'm not saying anything other. I, I, I wholeheartedly believe UFOs are real now because of that footage. I think the real question is what's driving it. I think that should be the only mystery, not the idea that they're existing. The idea of what's driving it. I mean, are you guys coming across a lot of that? I am personally. I I see everything from you know, apathy, people just don't have an interest in it, to a very good friend of mine who just he's not quite hostile, but almost when we talk about it, he thinks I'm out of my mind for even wanting to talk about it with him. His world is one that is black and white. You know, if he can't see it, touch it, feel it, it isn't real. That's scary. Mike, you getting the same? Yeah, I am getting the same. I think um, what I'm starting to see a lot of people is their narrative. You know, know, I think people are so set to their their story, to their narrative, to their belief system or their worldview that when something new tries to challenge that, they react poorly to it. And I know with a lot of um, people I've interacted with, uh, they don't. They don't want to have their narrative changed. You know, they like the way things are, and I think that's maybe it's human nature. I don't know, but people are just are having real trouble adjusting their narrative. And, and in Connecticut, I, it's definitely a, a something that we're trying to fix. With but uh, it's it seems to still be an uphill battle. Surprisingly enough, with all the information out there. I mean. When you watch those videos, for, and there's a lot, I understand there's a lot of people. They don't understand what they're looking at because they don't understand fear and they don't understand the, the numbers in the screen they're seeing, that things that pilots understand. But when you see something break lock and move left as fast as that object did, I think people fail to get it. doesn't look fast in that, that image, but that's incredibly fast. There, no jet breaks lock like that and gets out of image that fast. It's impossible. Right. And not only that, then you have the gimbal video, which, in my opinion, gives Bob Lazar a lot of a big credit for Bob because he described the way the thing, the propulsion net, long ago, belly up first, and from belly there it would rotate and go to the direction it was the belly was aiming. So these yes. are military videos. So I think this makes me wonder: is the close is disclosure good? Is it a good thing? I think it is. I think it's inevitable. If we want to grow as a species and we want to explore the stars and if they're out there, then we need to come to, re- to the conclusion and, and accept the reality that they're real because eventually you're going to run into these, these creatures or these, these species once we leave our solar system. It might not be anytime soon, but it might also be. You never know. Technology changes so quickly and the better... And the faster humanity comes to accept that, um, the better we can grow as a species. Agreed. Especially now with private industry going to space. I said this before to you guys. I said it to a lot of people. Jeff Bezos goes up, and he's got a, a, a rocket full of celebrities, and they got video cameras or any recording devices, and they see one. They're not suppressing that. That's going viral quick. And then, sure. then you're going to be confronted with it. Dan, in the government, and when you worked for government, mm-hmm. so... Let's say you're out on a drive and you see something fantastic. You see an object, illuminated object, take off vertically at a rate of speed that's mind blowing. Do you go to work and talk about that or or not? 
Um, I would. I would talk about it with the people I was closest with at work. I mean, that, that, this field was not part of my, my job, but there are a lot of people where I worked who are very open-minded to things like this. So yeah, I would be able to go and talk to them about it. I, I wouldn't have been afraid of being ridiculed about it now. So the majority of others might have a, a fear of ridicule. I don't think they would. I think there's a lot of younger people now within that agency. I think that they would probably very be very receptive now. Plus, you know, hearing about it. And so when I got to ask that question, my reply to it was, you know, the government released these videos. Now you're asking agencies to what? Put a stigma on it? They this is a government agency. They're very intelligent and they're 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 going to be more receptive to the idea. Not maybe for the the purpose of mystery, but for defense and for mm-hmm. security and you know, I think most of the pushback from these people are getting, or from people in general, uh, it comes from organized religion. They're really set up. Like, they, it's that's it. Like, I, I know people like this in my life. They're like, God made here, and there's nothing else. And whatever, right. whatever else comes here is the devil. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. And my argument to them is, well, now take your smartphone, jump in a time machine, go back to the 1700s, you'll be crucified, right? Because you're a witch. How dare you have that technology? So... It, it just, it's the reason I bring it up. It scares me that there's so much pushback after even, I think Stanton Freeman said it, right? Where there's the amount of evidence we had, it's, it's depressing that it's not looked upon more seriously. And now you scale it up to what we're using for our, now we have military equipments picking it up. Come on. It's time. It's past time. We, we, we need to evolve, not just as a species, but as an individual. And I mean, mentally it's open your eyes up. I don't know why it's so hard. Next, on on that topic, and what leads me to that is Skinwalker Ranch. I have been picking people's brains uh, on podcasts, off podcasts, reading things. You're talking about a location where billionaires have invested time and money and and, and years of research. There's obviously a reason. So when I say that, I I personally don't know what goes on there. Eventually, I'm going to go. But there's obviously a reason. So we'll start with Dan. Dan, what are your thoughts on Skinwalker? Wow. My thoughts are that, wow, I'm I'm almost at a loss for words because it's, it's such a collection of, of things there. You have UFO issues going on. You have what looks like multidimensional things happening there. And you, of course you have the native American folklore. And you have people going there who have become physically ill where, where before they were healthy. So there's something going on. What it is, I couldn't even venture a guess other than it seems to be a focal point of a whole lot of activity that the government has been interested in and probably still is. I would imagine so. Because, you know, Bigelow put billion, lots of money there, a lot of – and to his frustration, and someone recently told me that he, you know, life for people that get involved there turns bad, whether it be health reasons or personal or otherwise. Uh, it's almost like uh, maybe the obsession of it. But the yeah, it could be. I mean, the, the the geography of that place speaks to an anomaly in itself. Right? The, the, there's abnormalities in in the magnetics around there. They're finding radiation in it. There's been these images of of objects large objects coming and going from there, which are pretty well documented. So I have to wonder if that, like, and I said that before is maybe that's the Petri dish, right? Maybe there's something that's caught the interest of our observers, uh, our attention. And, and, you know, so it, it's maybe a magnet for other energies, whether it be paranormal or otherwise. I mean, there's something attracting the abnormalities there. What did, what did you pick up on that, Mike? I actually like Skinwalker Ranch. I, I read a lot about it, and I've watched a lot of documentaries on it. I think it's a portal. I don't know if it's created by some long-lost technology that was maybe buried there because they found weird magnetic um, objects. And I think once on one of those documentary shows, they found they did um, 
a radar scan of the uh, ground and found it looked like structures or something. So I don't know if it's it's man-made or if it's something natural. I think that if you look at the characteristics of the effects of like a wormhole or a portal, the, the radiation that those hypothetically are supposed to put out matches a lot of what people would experience at Skinwalker Ranch. As for the paranormal or, or aliens, I, you know, I think that depending on how you, your own belief system is how you would um, quantify that or, or uh, label that. Because if you're really religious, it, you know, an interdimensional being, an interdimensional being will look like a paranormal object to you, a demonic or angelic, whatever, however spectrum you're looking at. If you're a scientist or um, more of an investigator or an objective researcher, maybe you would say that's just an interdimensional being. So the wording can be interchanged, UFO. Uh, and so that's what I think it is. I think there's a portal there. I don't know if it's man-made or if it's something created by nature, like if there's something in the rocks. I know that the rocks have a magnetic quality to them. They have a very high radiation. But if you read about the effects of the of a wormhole and the radiation put out from wormholes and the characteristics of wormholes, some of that does show itself at Skinwalker Ranch. And then you read the reports of, of objects coming out of a, a portal um, or a, one was a, a bean coming out of a portal, some kind of alien monster. And this is one of the guys that worked at Sk uh, Skinwalker under Bigelow, Colonel something. I forget his name. He's famous apparently. But um, so that's what I think. I think there's definitely something there. What it is, I don't know. And for the Native American lore, it would be no different than like you were saying, if, if you were to go take a smartphone and go back 100,000 years, they would think you were a witch. 100,000 years, sorry. They don't think you were a witch. You have to, you put in, you, you quantify, you qualify what is based on your knowledge at the time. And that's probably why the Native Americans um, said it was par um, paranormal because they were religious and that's how they could rationalize it. Agreed. You know, uh, I was talking to Steve Murr recently, uh, a couple days ago, <clears throat> and he, he's a paranormal specialist from England. Uh, I've had him on a few times. He's a, he's he, he's well read, and he's you know he's done his homework. This guy's been researching the. When I say paranormal, I mean parallel to the normal, meaning anything ufology. He 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 really thinks that they should break walls down in investigating between paranormal and ufology, which I tend to agree. A lot of parallels there. That being said. In my own research, uh, on something he was, uh, Project Doorway, something he's researching more in depth. And this has to do with uh, vibrations and frequencies. and Because largely in part, when I see UFOs and the activity they perform, I think they, they operate at a frequency, right? That's, that's probably why they escape inertia. Um, Tesla, in some of Tesla's reports, he'd spoken about, you know, uh, something like 432 hertz is how humans and the earth, it's it's synced. Like they, they use the same frequencies. So when you go to somewhere like Skinwalker Ranch, it makes me curious to know if anyone's measuring for that. If there's anything abnormal with the frequencies there. Because one of the geologists on site noticed that he kept getting ringing in his ears. And what comes to mind for me, I get sinus problems pretty often. So when you get a sinus problem, a high pitch sound that would otherwise not bother you, it will trouble you at that moment. You're going to notice something a little bit different because our heads are pretty much receptors, especially with sound. So when it comes to Skinwalker Ranch, and I've heard a lot of theories. I've heard of being downwind from for radiation from nuclear tests. I've heard about, and as far as what you said earlier about being structures beneath the surface, I think we found a wall that's under, like under Texas. If I'm not sure, I have to read that again. But there's definitely structure well underground that they found or came across. So that being said, uh, from a you know let's let's rewind time maybe two million years ago. And there's a, a a civilization that had it could breathe the air at that time because obviously the air was different, and then they perished. Well, over the course of two million two million years, structures would be underground. Like if an exa another example would be uh, Easter Island, those statues, the majority of them are underground. Like I saw what is it like twenty plus other feet underground. So sure, I can make room for that idea. That place is an absolute anomaly. And I don't think it's, it's irresponsible. I see some of these other researchers that knock that place. 
They're there for a week. It's kind of irresponsible to, to have real science. Go there, spend, spend, make it a real science process. Spend some months there. You know, really dig in. Uh, and don't, don't worry about doing it for likes and video. Get the science. And if the proof follows, great. But don't knock something until you actually apply full resources to it. So I don't know. I mean, based on everything we're speaking about, and, you know, people still not believing in UFOs, even with the proof that's been obviously handed to us, uh, government disclosure, it brings me to that again. Uh, I think I think we're being spoon-fed, I mean, personally. I mean, and I only think we're being spoon-fed because, it, again, what I said about private industry going to space, and eventually we're going to come to terms with this. But ultimately, what in the MUFON circle with you guys, that you're having these meetings, what's your thoughts on government uh, this? disclosure and how, how soon do you think it's going to become, you know, full circle when we know more? Well, I, I think guys, if it happens in my lifetime, we'll be lucky. I think that you just hit on it, Adam. It's being handed to us a little bit at a time and they, they may have very good reasons for it. Could be they're worried about the economy that whatever the new technology would do to the global finance, it could be national security issues, but Eventually, it is going to come out. It's just a little bit at a time. Yeah. I wonder if they worry about the pitchforks and the people saying, those are the devils. we got to get them. <laughs> you know? that's. <laughs> I hate to laugh at that, but that's that's what comes to mind is is the pushback from humanity. Mike, what do you, what do you think, Mike? Disclosure. What, what's, your, what's, your, what's your prediction on that? I don't think we're going to get the smoking gun until a craft lands in the yeah, like in a mini mall somewhere and comes out and talks to the average Joe, because if a craft was to land at a military base or some government facility, they could control the narrative and we might not hear about it. But I mean, think about it this way. And, you know, since 2017, when that um, New York times article came out, look how much has changed uh, already. I mean, UFOs are once again, uh, talked about in mainstream media after Project Blue Book closed and they wrote the Condon report, the Air Force said they would never look at UFOs again and now they're starting up another UFO investigative um, project. And then of course they had the one that Harry Reid set up and then later a different program that uh, Lou Arizondo was part of and Bigelow was involved. So they are looking into it. Mm motions are being put forward that are, are moving in the right direction. They're not moving backwards. They are moving forwards, but it's going to be a slow process. We're not going to get everything. And do I think a lot of what's going on now in, is in the way of researching and for example, like with the uh, Navy setting up a, a way for pilots to report what they see, um, is it optics? Yes. Is it maybe a little bit of PR just to keep the masses at bay and maybe use it for disinformation later. Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's, there's a long history of, of the military using UFOs as a cover story to test classified aircraft. Um, you know, you had the U-2 uh, is, a, is a good example. Um, and other, other craft uh, like the SR-71, the U-2, uh, so that you know, it's possible that they'll use it for that. But I do think we're moving in this in a in a more positive direction than we were before 2017, where we were just at a standstill, and the only thing out there was what researchers found, and what we, what researchers found was questionable at best because the sourcing was never, you know, right. sourcing was never the best either. So. Um, I think there's going to be disclosure someday, whether it's in our lifetime. I agree with Dan. I don't think so. But um, I do agree with you that they are slowly releasing that. Yeah. And I say it again, not because the government wants to hide things. Once upon a time, I thought that well, our government, they're hiding it from us. They don't want us to know shit. Well, it's not as you as you look back and you realize how humanity behaves with one another. I think they have a good reason. Uh, you know, People outnumber government by large numbers. Uh, same for law enforcement. And if you have humans that feel threatened by something that comes here, 
whether they're benign or otherwise, which, you know, in my opinion, they've been observing us for thousands of years. They're def- they're definitely benign for the most part. Um, I think there would be a ma- massive blowback. I-, I think it would turn ugly. I think there would be religious fanatics that would turn around and say, the, 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 I'll say here, let me read this to you. This from an email some a uh, week ago, or a couple weeks ago. And this person says, hello, Adam. I like your theories on the gray aliens. Unfortunately, it's not grounded in reality. This is the enemy trying to fool you. <laughs> I had to email this person, by the way. I didn't understand what they meant by enemy. They meant Did say, say what enemy? No, no. It says this is this is the enemy trying to fool yeah, but me. Which enemy? Well, that's why I, I that's why so I emailed back. I'm like, I'm what's enemy? It said Satan, straight up. <laughs> right. Said these creatures are demons amongst us. And they're trying to take the souls of man by convincing us to travel with them to the stars. And we would willingly go. And long story short, when I'm reading this, it's, I had to sit back and wonder, I was like, is this out of some movie? And then, so I start looking, I started doing research into organized religions. And, you know, I never really, I, you don't realize how many different forms of Christianity exist until you really look. And some of the, some of them are, it's, it's kind of cult like, it's, it's scary. You know, they're, they're dead set on, on this is it God made here and anything outside of that is an abomination of God or something of that nature. And I'm like, do you still think that everything revolves around the earth? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> have you, have you not figured that part out? We have, we have Hubble. We know now that not only is there other galaxies and not only is there uh, the universe, but there's potentially more universes. And when I discovered that I felt pretty small, I got the press one night because it was so hard for me to comprehend. And I'm a pretty open-minded person. And even that crushed me a little bit, lets you know that's my humanity showing. But at the end of the day, the per- that person wrote that email with conviction. Like, <laughs> I like your theories, but it's not grounded in reality. But he said, Satan. <laughs> but, so that's, it's it's an oxymoron, right? So I don't I don't know. That's, I'll that, tell you what's what's troubling is, and, and maybe you gentlemen have heard it too, is Lou Elizondo said, I believe, that there are people, senior people within the Pentagon and elsewhere who think that way, that whatever this is, they think it's demonic and they did not want the effort to go forward. That frightens me. God, that, that, that's troubling. That really frightens me. That's... That's a that's not an open minded individual that should be helping lead the the free world, but not by any means. That's that's <laughs> that's seventeen oh five politics, right? That's 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 scary stuff to hear. It is. Uh, I'm not telling people to not believe. I think religion's good because without it, you'd probably kill a neighbor, right? Because what stops you from killing the, the the neighbor, right? The fear of going to hell or prison, you know. I think law enforcement religion are kind of capped up in the same. It's, it's keeping people in check, which when you circle back to disclosure, what's keeping people in check? <laughs> you know, I, this person that sent that email has to represent a larger body of people. And if, if our observers land one day at a mini Mart and they want to just have an open discussion, are they going to be attacked by us? Well, I think what, what would have to happen is, you have to control the narrative and shape the story. As, as you've seen over the last couple of years, that marketing is very good at creating a narrative for a product or an issue. And if the government was truly serious to say, okay, you know, in like some high level meeting, they, they, these generals or policymakers or whoever it is, was to sit down and say, okay, we're going to have disclosure. Now we need to get the public to accept this and not go crazy because what it all comes back to is a, is a, is the RAND report. You know, it was a think tank report back in the early 1950s that basically said exactly what you two are saying that it's demonic. It, if it was released, it would cause world panic. You know, religions would have break down, social order would break down. But since then, and you know, now we had the 1950s with the advertising, 1960s, 70s, 80s, and even to, even the last few years, you can see it. If you control the narrative, if you can market it and think of it like a product and you give it enough time, you can change people's minds. And I think if the government wanted to do disclosure, 
serious disclosure, not just like some like release a tic tac video I'm like yeah yeah this is a uh, something in our skies but like serious disclosure and say these things are real they have visited us this is where they're from they would have to do something in the way of a, a serious marketing campaign and i think hollywood is is kind of on that now because if you look at some of the polls that are out there the youth the the millennials the gen z's even some of the gen xers um the vast majority of them accept that life exists in the universe or are indifferent to it. So depending on how the poll is asked, they're more receptive than the older generation are to say, okay, there's something out there. But it's all it comes down to marketing. And if you think of it like a product, I have no doubt that if they wanted to do this closure with a proper marketing campaign over time, they would change enough minds that there wouldn't be social breakdown. But you'd have to do it slowly and you have to make a real effort to do it. And they're just they're not they're not at that point yet. It's smart for whatever reason. It's probably not, what Dan was saying. It's creating a collective consciousness, right? With with uh, with media. Yeah. Which is the same I mean, it's smart because at the same time, if you think about it, that's what fuels a lot of the fires out there. That same that same thing being can't but that's being marketed by radical people. But you're right. If the government were to say, look, if we're gonna do a real disclosure Let's do this in a way where we could brand it. That makes a lot of sense. I think yeah. it would, you'd find people more. In fact, if you do it enough in a 10 year period of time, when if per se aliens do come down to earth, people would be like, oh yeah, I looked at there. Cool. What are we doing? I mean, you would even, they would even do it slower. <laughs> they would probably start off. If, if I was the marketing person, I would start off with something mundane. Like we found bacteria in the soil of Mars. It's alive. And then you start working your way up from there. So you, you get people used to it. And then you slowly keep adding to the story. And it's, it's, it's just changing their consciousness. It's changing their view on, on something. And, and they do it all the time. I mean, marketing, po politicians, the government, this is nothing new. Um, you know, CIA took down gover governments using propaganda like this. It all is is a propaganda campaign. It's true. It's just a question of putting the resources to it and putting the time into it and putting the focus and the dedication into it. But they're not at that point yet. You know, I, I agree with you a lot on that. Um, and again, they also have to factor in. And you're right. It's, it's like I said, collective consciousness across the way. There are factors. Uh, how do we there? How do we move forward uh, economy wise? Uh, people like Elon, if aliens were real, his, he would schedule meetings because he would more, he, all he cares about is the technology. You know, how do we, you know, I want to replicate it. How do we use it, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, people, he's, he's a pretty open-minded person. And then you'll have other people <laughs> with their own strategies, right? I said this on the podcast recently. It's like, uh, Jeff Bezos would just want to know how to get Amazon over there. Right. Well, mm -hmm. Where's your planet? You guys can plug in. We got everything. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, those are the those are the things that ring, you know, they ring true to me anyway. And society as a whole, religion, religion is going to have to conform. I mean, I, the Catholics are already starting. There, I've just read this. I, someone else just told me about it, so it made me read it more. They're already starting to expand on the idea that hey, God made life everywhere. Which I look, I I could I could put some weight behind that. I think there's definitely a, an architect when you look at a, the space and, and the dark matter of space and the cosmic web. There, it, it looks constructed. Well, look at look at how many of, of the massive telescopes are owned by the Catholic Church or owned by orders of the Catholic Church. Well, see, that surprised me. I didn't know that. Someone made yeah. me aware of that recently, and I was like, get out of here. The Catholic Church, why would they need that if everything was built here? And then I looked it up, and sure as hell, they have, even right at the Vatican, they have some. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean— so they're making room, and I'll tell you why. The Catholics are smart. Credit to them. How are they going to make more money? Because they're going to get all the... If you look at it, I, I don't want to bash, but when you look at like a Catholic church in New York or even in the Vatican, you're looking at marble and some of the, some of the best materials on the planet create those places. They're not cheap. So at the end of the day, like, yeah, UFOs, come on in. You can believe here. We believe too. They they serve God. I, I can see that. Um, I'll tell you what else is interesting. Uh, to to the point of there being bacteria, we're, we're looking strongly now at, uh, at one of the moons of uh, Jupiter. We're strongly looking at that. Uh, and even Saturn. Well, let me read this again. 
one of them, they feel it's a planet full of water. It's one large ocean. And they're strongly, Europa. yeah, they strongly believe bacteria life at the very minimum will be found there. Yeah. Let's say, yeah, they, they strongly feel bacteria will be found there at, at minimum. I mean, that's, that's so much so that they're going to dedicate a probe to it, which I, I commend them. Do it. Well, there's strong evidence that that moon has thermal vents and they've, they've seen outgassing on probes. And that would mimic a lot of what's at the bottom of our deepest oceans where we have those those vents coming out from the where the divergent plates are. Um, yeah, and things and live there. there's a whole ecosystem. Yeah, there. things live there. It's extreme, but they li- they call them extremophiles, right? Is that, is that the mm-hmm. word? So, sure. Dan, your sister, what do, what do you believe about space adventure where if you all right so if i gave dan a, a budget that was endless where would you send probes to because i'm sure you had time to think about it i would do exactly i think what we are planning to do we're going to go back to the moon and then we're going to go from there to mars which is by comparison reasonably easy to get to right. not that it is easy it is not but that i would do what we're doing i would do exactly that yeah, moon would definitely be good proving ground plus launch site, right? Because mm-hmm. you don't you don't need rocket fuel to take off from there, right? So yeah, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. So here's another thing I'm gonna say: MUFON numbers going up. Yeah. Well, my my chapters we're averaging probably about seven a month. I don't know about Connecticut. Seven seven members or seven? No, no, meetings? seven seven cases a month. Oh. Um, I think we had like six last month and eight the month before. We're about the same. Um, that's a lot for Connecticut though, because I don't know about where you are, Dan, but I know in Connecticut prior to mm, this past year with the UFO really taking center stage, we were averaging like maybe three, four a month. So Mm. our numbers are up. I'll say this for MUFON. I've, I've even gotten to be in a meeting. I'm not sure how I got there, but I was in a meeting and I speak to a lot of them and I've read more and they're all very open-minded people and they're very diverse. I say this a lot on the show. I'm going to keep repeating this. It's a very diverse group of people and not that they're all like-minded. Some people have their own opinions and as they should, right? That's a, that's a healthy way to have an organization, but as a whole, uh, I commend MUFON. I think highly of it. I, I wish I wish there would be more people like that in other bodies of government. They should think this way. Um, I don't hear anyone in MUFON. So, so far, I haven't heard a single person from MUFON just absolutely spit on another person's idea. Never. Never happened once. They're pr- every one of you are very good about absorbing information and, and abstracting what you need from it and moving forward from there. You know, I, so, you know, my hat's off to all of you, honestly. Thank you. Oh, thanks. So we're going to move to this name now. It's it's constantly coming to my attention. I, I knew very little of this guy other than seeing him in a couple of documentaries. And even in the documentaries, no one has really explained who, I mean, other than, we. I mean, we know what his titles were, but he, he's so involved in ufology, and especially in documentaries and series. His name's Richard C. Doty. Mm-hmm. What is the story with that guy? Richard Doty was um, a counterintelligence officer with the Air Force OSI, Office of Special Investigation. He's now retired. But the, the story is that Mr. Doty was part of a, a disinformation campaign targeting uh, people who believed in UFOs and researched them. Oh. And many people blame him for the death of a gentleman out in um New Mexico because of that disinformation program that he, that Doty was involved in. Yeah. I, I can't go one day without that name or at least for like the last couple of months now. And I've been kind of blown it off. I mean, when I looked it up, you see it pretty much what you normally see, right? You'll see some images of him. He'll talk about who he was. What I didn't see is a single, uh, not, not another member of government or military, you know, speak with him directly or, or, 
or nor do I even understand what his agenda is right now. Cause at one point in time, you're saying he's, he's misinformation, which uh, I'll have to look down to that, the depth that I person I didn't realize he went that far, but I, I don't see anyone speaking about who he was and, and anyone from his, you know, from his background, nor do I, I comprehend his agenda. Like I said, I, he, he's in all these ufology, like documentaries, he, right alongside of some investigators that are in these documentaries. I don't, what's his agenda currently? What do you think he's currently got going on? I don't know that he has an agenda. I think he, he's retired and had been working in law enforcement. And of course he goes on the speaking circuit as well now, but I don't know that he has an agenda. I mean, like, does he, is he confirming or denying their, I mean, he can't deny their existence. He's a member of, former member of government. You, and, and now you, he's seen the videos. I'm sure he knows. So is he is he pro UFO in these documentaries? I, whenever I hear this guy speak, he's saying that what he did, he's saying who he is, but he never really speaks about his opinion about what they are, why they're here, none of that. He never expresses that. What I've heard him say is that his access to places like Area Fifty One was only I would, a superficial level. He never got to go down what they call S4 level, which is what Bob Lazar was supposed to be working at. So his knowledge of what is actually going on may be limited. Hmm. I want to track that guy down. I want to talk to him. <laughs> you know, would he talk to me? I don't know. I, I'm not, as you guys come to know me, I'm, I'm not the aha person. I'm not going to paint someone in the corner. I just want to hear his thoughts. Mike, what's your opinion on that guy, Richard Doty? I think... Um... Given his current, well, given his background in counterintelligence, I think anything you get from him is uh, you have to take with a grain of salt. I think even though he's retired, you know, I don't know if you ever really retired. Maybe you do, but I think he follows the party line. Um, so I I know he was involved with that Paul, um, uh, was it Benowitz? And I yes. think he was the guy that did. He was the one who killed himself, right? Or no, he's still around. No, he died. Yeah. So um, okay, so he was. So I know that he was involved with that. There's a lot of documentation out that. There's even a book out on it that talks a lot about his role in in, in that event with Paul. Um. I just think that given his background, given that he admitted that he was in counterintelligence, I mean, how can you really believe him? Um, when his job was to spend all of his time disproving and making ufologists seem nuts. Um, yeah, I yeah, agree. I, I think he just, he, he doesn't have any credibility, so just don't listen to him. Yeah, I, if I ever get around to speaking with him, it's not going to be in terms of uh, his experiences. I'm going to, I would speak to him, and there's some other people I'm going to do that with. Uh, you know, an example, if I get Bob Lazar on the show, I'm, he's well documented. I'm not going to beat that that path. I would more or less want to hear his theories, his thoughts moving forward. You know what he predicts. You know, speak to him in that sense. Um, Richard Doty, just like I, even when I look at the guy, it, it, it gives me like that I, that that sense of like you could he looks deceiving, right? And to the credit of Lou Alizondo, uh, Alizondo, uh, he he's retired. He's he's pro for this. He wants the information out there, but he he admits. He has, uh, he's, he's got, he's sworn to secrecy and things, right? He has an oath and I admire that. I, I really admire that because that's, that's the most honest thing you can hear someone say. I'm pro for this, but I can't speak to everything, everything because I'm still under, I'm still by a code and you have to respect that. And for a lot of people's government military, I respect that. So long as they're not doing things like what this guy was doing from what I'm reading about this guy, he was poisoning people's minds horribly. And he did a real number on that, Paul. I mm-hmm. enough. I obviously, if he killed himself, I'd have to. I got to look more into that because that, that's troubling. And then the fact that he's paraded on TV and he's on all these documentaries. And if I didn't get an email from an individual, I did my very best to not watch sensationalized documentaries when I was researching all this before the podcast. I did my best to read and watch things that were more, and they were some people I think consider them boring but they're more information filled. It's not an entertainment thing. And I sat through hours of that and I have more to go through, but 
when I did start coming across his stuff and hearing some of the stuff he was involved with, I don't know. It's really disturbing, you know. And like you said, his credibility has got to be shattered. I mean, I would definitely not be able to take everything he says for serious because I don't know. I don't see how I could. I mean, I would just ask, a said said point. I'll just ask his theories. Or Mike and Dan hearing him and listening to him. Yeah, yeah, I'll hear him out. Uh, again, but I'm going to speak in the narrative, right? I, I want him to speak in theory. And like his the documents of his past, I, I I could care less because even then, I'm not sure what he's going to tell me. So you guys got your show coming up. You're going to be starting, yeah? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, in, a, in about two weeks, I think, right, Mike? Awesome. Yes, two What's, weeks, maybe three, maybe three weeks. What's the title you guys came up with? Go ahead, Mike. U- UFOlogy fact or fiction? Love it, love it. <laughs> I'm gonna tune into that. I like it. So, are you guys gonna? It's just gonna be examining prior cases, and then obviously some cases you worked with. We have about fifty or sixty episodes yeah material or topics lined up and they cover cases yeah but that's not going to be all that we talk about we're going to be talking about things like we're talking about here we're going to talk about cases we're going to talk about history we're going to talk about a gamut of topics related to ufos well i'm excited to hear that myself because here's what i like about the two of you and people don't uh Maybe they don't see why or I, I, they, I get into it with you guys. The both of you are very level, right? You're very grounded in reality. You, diff, you, you do your due diligence. You learn. And you, you speak to what you, what you know, right? You're not, you're not labeling things as fact. So I, I like that. I think people are going to dig it. I mean, I, I'm going to follow it for certain. Well, we're going to tape on the 18th of February. So we should have it out sometime the following week. And you're going to have it on what? Uh, YouTube? Yes, awesome. YouTube. Awesome. All right, well, that's the news I want to hear, and I'm going to tune in for that, so let me write that down so I have it. Ufology, fact or fiction. With Mike and Dan. <laughs> Mike and Dan. <laughs> Mike and Dan. It already sounds like a show, right? Well, perfect. All right, gentlemen, before we close tonight, is there anything you guys want to add? Thank you again for having me on your show, and I appreciate the opportunity. Fantastic, yes, Dan. As always, Adam, thank you so much. Much appreciate appreciated. It. I appreciate you guys coming on, and I, I look forward to hearing your show, maybe coming on your show. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah, we'll love to have you on the show. And we're going to do that eventually, right, Mike? We're going to yep. get to a point where we're ready to have people come on and talk. Yeah. yeah have it interactive, too. Yeah. We even Dan was even talking we could maybe try doing a uh, a live show. I think you should. Maybe have some call-ins, you know? I mean, I, yeah. I think that'd be a fantastic idea. Yeah. Well, that's got to be exciting. Well, hopefully it takes off. We'll see. Well, I look forward to it. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure again. I look forward to doing it again. And actually, I look forward to being on your show sometime soon. Sounds good, Adam. Thank you. Not a problem. Thank you. You guys have a good night. You too. 